بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة على أشرف الخلق وعز المرسلين بالقاسم محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين وصحبه المنتجبين One of the important influences of Islam upon human is taking care of his rational thinking. The way to analyze things, to look at things from different angle, to make you more educated, more aware of what's going around you, to think, to use your intelligence. In Islam, as a human, you do not just dig into the spiritual, metaphysical dimension. In Islam, we do not just talk about heaven, hellfire. We do not just talk about spirit and soul. We do not just talk about the unseen things, unseen creation. In Islam, we do not just talk about the stuff that I cannot touch that beyond my senses. In Islam, you do not decouple yourself from your body, from your materialistic dimension. No. One of the ways to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through your rational thinking. So that's why Islam was against ignorance not against the question. Against ignorance, not against knowledge. Against ignorance, not against understanding and searching for the truth. And that's why Islam encourages analytical and rational thinking. And it builds such kind of personality. As you know, even in Islam, there is, and if I want to believe in God, you do not say, I believe in God because my parents believed in God. No. You have to prove it to yourself. You have to prove it. Yes, I might go to the scholar to explain to me, to get from him what he derived from what he understood from an Islamic verse, what we call it fatwa. He understand, he or she understands something, and I do not know whether it's right or wrong. I have to go to a scholar because he has more time to search and ask him about it. And I'm not talking about the core values of Islam because there are no question about them. You have you have to know them, you have to seek them. I'm not going to talk to the scholar, ask him, is lying halal or haram? For sure it's haram. No, I'm talking about the details. There are certain details, I need certain questions, certain answers about them. You go to a scholar because if you have more time, go dig and search in order to get the proper answers. If you have the proper knowledge and proper time. In Islam, there is nothing called, I am a scholar, you are not. Everyone is a, in Islam is a candidate to be a scholar. And the job of the scholar is to find solution for your problem, an answer for your question. And that's why Islam encourages what? Questions. Legitimate questions, not trivial ones. In a way, they are illogical. Is like a person comes to Imam Ali asking him, how many hairs are in my, on my... Who cares about this question? You ask, something does not make, does not waste my time or waste your time. Something is gonna improve you, educate you, enlighten you. And how did Islam do this? First, as I said, Islam did not detach you from this materialistic life. Did not tell you this materialistic life does not exist as some philosophers might 
argue. No sense philosophers might argue. And Islam did not tell you, oh, I just, God created you, do not ask how. No. Islam, in Surah Al-Ankabut, said, قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ بَدَأَ الْخَلْقِ See, when I read in Islam, when I read in Quran, when I read in the tradition of the Prophet and his house, purified household, these words, think, analyze, rationalize, watch, meditate, all these words are a powerful keys to build rational thinking. So many ayat, so many verses in Quran pushing us to rationalize things. One of the biggest ayah that in our subject here, important ayah in our subject, is this ayah. Qul, tell them, Muhammad, tell them you are the messenger. Tell them, Qul siru fil ard, go in this universe, on this earth, inside the earth, outside the earth, on the surface, in the water, in the ocean, oceans, in the rivers. Wander around, walk, travel. Go take a look. How did we start the first creation? It's a big challenge. It's a big challenge because in order to see this creation, I have to have tools. I have to have sciences. I have to have rational thinking. I have to analyze things. And that was a call from Islam to be rationalized. And also we see this even in the time of Abraham alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a very good image of this rational, uh, uh, rationality analyzing, seeking evidence, objectivity in the story of Abraham. Didn't you believe Abraham? Haven't you believed in God? What Abraham said, yes, I did. Abraham is talking to Allah, telling him, oh God, I would like to know how do you resurrect creation? Allah asked him, didn't you believe? Aren't you a believer? What did Abraham say? He said, yes, I am a believer. But I want to be more satisfied. I need to know how you do it. I need to know the ways you use so I can explain it to people. So I know the cause and the fact so I know the reason and the consequences of this reason. So I know the action and the action. And that was a door for knowledge from Abraham alayhi salam. And God gave him a materialistic evidences. He told him to cut certain birds into pieces, mix them and put them on the mountain and God showed him the resurrection. Not because he was questioning God, because he was wondering how the creation is, or it would be. So this ayah, come to this ayah, قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ بَدَأَ الْخَلْقِ Some people, they challenge us, you Muslims, you are dumb, isn't it? Why? Because you believe in God, you invented the idea, not just Muslims, in general believers. You invented an idea called God, so you can understand this universe. You are weak, that's why you believe in a creator, like some atheist nowadays. While, as we prove to you, according to their statement, that everything was by chance. As they say, God is the master of, uh, it's a great gambler. By chance, 
okay, we got those carbon atoms, some molecules, through so many probabilities and millions, billions of years, we start having a living uh, cell or bacteria, start evolving after billions of years, millions of years, whatever you want to call it, we start having this creation. And you believe in God because you Muslims especially, and believers in general, you are not allowed to think, you are not allowed to rationalize things, you are not allowed to analyze. So therefore you created, invented an idea called God to make you understand such kind of complicated images in this universe. That's wrong. For so many reasons, it's not the time for it. Otherwise this, le this lecture would be more scientific. But I can tell you this. Islam is not against evolution, brothers and sisters. Islam is against Darwinism. There is nothing wrong to say God made certain beings and gave them the power to evolve. They're still under the supervision of God. But what's wrong is to say God was not aware of it. Or God was not capable to stop it. Or it was not under the supervision or the design of God. If I want to use these new terminologies. It is wrong to say that God was not aware that if this and you react with that, I will have this kind of substance. This is then not Islam. But to tell me that there are certain stuff evolves, yes, definitely they evolve. Now the only big question, did we evolve from monkeys or we evolved from different path? That's a big subject. To us, we say as Muslims, the first human on earth was Adam. The successful in, on earth is Adam. That's the first human. How did Adam look like? I don't know. How did he look like? I do not know. But I know for a fact he was not a monkey. Why? Because in the beginning, before he was sent to earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, وَعَلَّمَ آدَمَ الْأَسْمَاءَ كُلَّهَا He taught Adam so many sources of knowledge. And a monkey does not have these capabilities. That's one thing. Secondly, we have certain narrations. Now, I cannot say it is our belief because it's just narrations. We have to check how authenticated it is and how many they are. But we have in our history certain narrations that said before our Adam, we, have, we had so many Adams. That means before our race as a human, we had on earth other kinds of creations. We do not know how they look like. So if you are digging on this earth and you find some skeletons that does not look like us, there is a chance maybe they are from different creations. Because we are not the only people who used to live on earth. God did not create this earth just for us. It was before us according to certain narrations in Islam, which definitely needs more analysis and proofs. But it's, I'm just giving you certain ideas. Secondly, and this is another important thing, we have even some narrations when God created Adam out of the clay. He left Adam so many years before the soul the spirit, the vivid part in the body was set in that body. That's another question. Why Adam, if that narration is accurate, as I said, it needs more studies. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept Adam according to that narration? 
so many years before he had the soul. That means so many reactions, chemical reactions happening. We do not know it. To tell me that the human being is evolving, yes, definitely it will evolve. But to tell me it's evolving from this to that, it needs a proof. Where is the link? Where is the link? Prove it to me. If you prove it, that does not mean God does not exist, as I'm saying. Because I do not know what God, the design of God, what God wanted. But I know as a Muslim has to be under the supervision of God. Now how, it, how he did it, it's up to him. Maybe I can know. And this is the ayah here is pushing us to go and search, analyze. قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ بَدَأَ الْخَلْقِ Go search. Do your study. And what's so sad that the non-Muslims are answering this ayah while well, the Muslims are just living in different galaxies because of so many issues and problems. So this is a call to, and this is a big call, brothers and sisters, to go seek the first moment in this universe or to understand the first creation in this universe, that means you have to have so many complicated labs, high-tech tools, good universities, research, publications, teams, educated people, all that and building a society that's full of knowledge, full of science, full of rational thinking, full of analysis. So this is another proof how Islam pushed you toward that. And Islam from the beginning gave us this beautiful, simple understanding of the universe. When you see something, do not just assume it is there. Oh, it is there. Oh, there is a reason why it is there. See this ayah and another ayah and so many other ayat. أَفَلَا يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ How did we make this camel? How did we create this universe? How did we create this earth? How did Islam all the time call you this? And all the time it says أَفَلَا يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Don't they use their intellectual reasoning? أَفَلَا يَنْظُرُونَ Don't they watch and analyze? All this is building a rational personality and so many other reasons. Another important aspect, because we are running out of time, is objectivity. There is no sense to say I'm a rational guy, I'm a good thinker, I'm a good engineer, I'm a good scientist, but you are not objective. Because if you are not objective, that means the data that you are collecting may not be good for you because you are expecting different patterns, different outputs. Objectivity is a key in any rational thinking. And that's why Islam made it very obvious that you have to be objective. You should not be subjective no matter what's the case. Even when you are dealing with, an, with, the, with your enemy. وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا Do not let the hate make you unjust. Do not. Even if you hate this guy, even if you do not like his race, you do not like his color, you do not like his class, you do not like his shape, you do not like his accent, you do not like whatever soul, do not make such, do not let such hate make you unjust. Don't. Be just with every person, even if you do not agree with them. Even if you do not see what they are talking about. Even if they do not believe in what you, be, you, are, you believe in. Even if you do not rationalize what they are talking about, you have to be just. And when it comes to the lab, 
when it comes to scientific evidences, when it comes to real life, also you have to be objective. And that's why we have so many narrations, like, you know, we have this narration, Adna anwa al-shirk. Adna anwa al-shirk. One of the colors to be a disbeliever is what? To deny God? To deny God? No. We have different dimension. Is when I give you a date to eat from the palm trees, not a date, you know, to have a date with someone. No, a date, fruit. And you have this date in your hand. You eat it. What's left is the seed of it. If you know it is the seed, and you insist saying, no, it is a stone, or vice versa, then you are not a good Muslim. As a Muslim, you have to be objective. Do you see the truth? You say it's the truth. You see something wrong, you say it is something wrong. You see, even if you do not like it, and that's one of the reasons lying in Islam is not accepted. One of the reasons. Because you are not objective. Why you lie? Because you are hiding the truth. The truth, because if the truth is not good for you, might hurt you, you do not say it, you hide it. And that's why sometimes you lie. Islam said, lying is not right. So rational thinking is there. And that's why in Aqidah, when it comes to believes in Islam, you have to go search and prove that belief. Prove the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Use your rational thinking. Afala. Uh, that's another ayah. Go watch how we created this. Another ayah. They look at the sky, they look at the heavens, they look at the earth, they look what, uh, uh, around what Allah subhanahu at what Allah sub around at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created. And they come to a conclusion. رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا Through their analysis, through their watching, meditation, rational thinking, they come to a point, they believe in God, and they say, رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ You are the Almighty. You are the Creator. You did not create this for no sense. And that's one of the big advantages to rationalize things around you. Is not to be like any other person. It's not like to be like a leaf that the wind takes it wherever the wind wants. No, you have to have your set of principles. You have to have a doctrine. You have to belong to the doctrine. You have to belong to the constitution. You are a member in, an, in, in this powerful nation that you have to stand up protected and to protect any other human fellow improve the life of the humanity take care of the human as well as nature this is when you become rational you have the stronger belief in God and your bond with the message will be strengthen through that and that's why ra rational thinking analyzing is important and that's why islam pushed you to study to get knowledge to get educated not to be ignorant to question to ask to get answers to ask for answers so in this situation, you are, when you come to this, you are, you have impunity. No one can deceive you. And no one can sell you the wrong version of the religion. And the wrong explanation of the religion. Through that. And through that, we can have better community, more productive. And through that, we can be a good competitors for others when it comes
to civilization movements. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم آخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين.